Hello, it gives me great pleasure to show you some of these fantastic Spartans by Vendor, uh, now produced by Thistle and Rose Miniatures, 28mm um, pewter miniatures, and they're absolutely lovely. I've really enjoyed painting these guys. This is the Spartan Command. Um, I've got a few more Spartans to show you, and then a few others from other um, groups such as Greek Archers and uh, so on. To give you an impression, they're all works in progress, but I've finished my small army of Spartans, uh, and as I say, they've been a lot of fun painting these guys up. Only things I've done slightly differently this time to my normal is I've actually used some oil paints on this guy's red cloak to give it that real vibrancy, which I've been trying to get from some other acrylic paints but never really hit it um, and I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out uh, it did take a hell of a long time to dry like about three days for the oil paint to fully dry but I think it's um, given it exactly that bright vibrant look that I was after for the Spartan General let's get these guys aside and I'll bring on some of the Spartan hoplites first group Got the classic Pelos helmets. Spears, they come with those uh, soft metal ones which I mentioned in the um, unboxing, which are all a bit bent and they excite me. So I changed them all over um, to those ones which I think are from Victrix from memory, uh, plastic spears. Also notice a few sidearms that I've just added again, Victrix ones, because initially when I looked at them, I thought it was obviously the one guy in the line of thorax and the other um, curious ones I thought were all the same but in fact they have all got some very subtle variations um, and Bill Hupp the main man at uh, Thistle and Rose said that uh, he as much as he loves having all the subtle variations he finds it very hard when he's putting them in in bags of four to make sure that he's got one of each variant because um, yeah, it can be quite hard to pick you've got to look at them very carefully to see sometimes there's just a little difference in how they're standing or head slightly turned to the side or some sort of little um, uh, extra buckle or brooch on one of their some of their equipment that's different reminds me when I was a kid they used to have in the newspaper often uh, two pictures of a puzzle two pictures side by side which at first glance looked identical but then once you looked at them in for some time and very carefully you could detect all these minor differences and there'd be a list on the next page of all the you know 20 different <laughs> subtle things that were uh, distinguishing the two pictures so it's a bit like that with these figures stare at them for hours trying to work out who's who and what's different which is quite cool but it also enables them to be ranked up like that very easily on a small base second bunch of hot lights a little bit more ornate um, on their helmets a bit more more fancy style these guys obviously just have the pilos helmets i wouldn't mind getting another set of them i think we need at least two little ranks of those guys but the other ones uh yeah have a bit of fun making them a bit more uh vibrant and ornate and colorful some of them i've used red inks for their um their skirts there some I think I use the red speed paint, so a very subtle variety of reds amongst the Spartans. And at this stage I just decided I'll leave their shields straight bronze. I think it looks pretty good actually. I was looking for some similar um, shield transfers for these guys, but I didn't have enough. And I just thought uh, actually they probably look as good if not better without. So I think I'll leave them as they are. And um, yeah extra happy with them they took a while to put together mostly because i wanted them to be quite high quality um, yeah, and i think they're fabulous the scale i did show the other day compared to victrix and so on they're almost identical scales so they work really well so they're the main guys i've got to show but then i've got quite a few that i'm working on that are various stages of um, production so i'll give you a quick whip through them as well um, the other thing to mention is that their historical accuracy is high. They've tried to model them on the Osprey um, uh, books, you know, to get the um, uniforms as correct as possible. Uh, Colin Patton is the sculptor, and I say he's gone to great lengths to put in some subtle variety even in the 
for guys that can easily be ranked up. Osprey books, if you haven't uh, seen them, there's some great ones. Um, it's the only one I've got at the moment. I'm getting some Greek and Persian ones coming. Uh, yeah, nice little books that give um, interesting descriptions of ancient armies and also uh, fantastic pictures of their appearances. So they're a great resource. Um, all right, I think I'll clear out the Spartans and we'll see how we're going with some of the other work in progress troops. So what do we got? So we've got a um, Greek cavalryman who's good. I used the um, oil paints again on this for the brown on the horse, which is sort of all right. But then I used the yellow on his tunic, which I'm quite happy with. Again, it took a few days to fully um, dry, but it does give it greater vibrancy than I've seen to been able to achieve with either speed paints or regular acrylic. So I'm pretty happy with that. In terms of the horses, they don't excite me terribly. They're quite kind of old school, fairly basic generic horses. You know, the musculature is not as well defined as say the War Games Atlantic horses and they don't have a lot of ornate uh, adornments on them. They're you know very basic saddle cloth and, and um, reins and so on, which isn't a bad thing. It's just a yeah, pretty... Um, Pretty standard, simple. Uh, there you go. I've actually started a few more of the riders, and I think I will put them on the War Games Atlantic horses and see how they look on them. Um, the shield, uh, one of their embossed shields that are beautiful. I'm not totally happy with that one. I probably overdid it with the gloss. I've put a few layers of, of uh, matte varnish on, but it doesn't seem to have been able to extinguish the extreme gloss. I've done a few more of those shields in a more bronze, uh, pretty much basic bronze with some shading which look a bit better than that but anyway um, I thought I'd leave that colour. Uh, at this stage who else have we got? Let's try the Indian elephant and this guy really early stages of my work on him but I absolutely love him, he's fantastic way better than I was expecting. I had seen some pictures on their Facebook page and if you missed my first video they don't actually have a website they only uh, go through Facebook and there's lots and lots of photos there but the ones that have been painted up probably not to a fantastic standard no offense to whoever painted them um, so I wasn't expecting that much but actually uh, this guy's going to be awesome once he's done and I might decide what I work on next but I may well Put a lot of time into doing him. I haven't started on the crew yet, but yeah, he's uh, very easy to put together. Nice pose, nice sort of weight distribution. Uh, I love the little um, headgear he's got on. Uh, I haven't even thought about painting some of the ornate patterns that they painted on the, the trunks of the Indian elephants, so that's something to contemplate. That's him. What about some Greek archers? Now these guys exceed my expectations. The pictures didn't look so exciting, but I'm crazy for Greek archers and Cretan archers, as you might know. So I thought I'd get them anyway. So two sets, one with the helmets and one with the um, just the hats. And again, all different. Um, I've got various stages, some of them almost complete. Most of them just basically kind of primed thus far and I love them they're beautiful a um, couple of issues there you'll notice a few there have arrows I've added them they're from Victrix and none of them come with arrows and they're all fairly similar poses and no, no one pulling an arrow out of their um, quiver or anything like that no, no crouching down which would be nice uh, but they're just beautifully made beautifully Proportioned, I know something about them I really enjoyed. Um, they have a couple of other lines of archers as well. They have uh, bare headed ones and they have ones with a pilos sort of helmet. So I'll be pretty keen to get my hands on both of those sets as well. well I'm looking forward to finishing off these guys. Obviously, I've done a little, gone a bit crazy with a couple of those helmets to uh, <laughs> get a bit of interest into them. Um, all right, and then last but not least, I've made a start on some Persians. Can we look at a few of these guys? Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Off we go, boy. 
those. Okay, so Persian commander who's a beautiful, awesome looking figure and um, a standard bearer. His funny little uh, wolf skin hat and then some of the immortals. There's four immortals again, they look identical at first glance, but there are some subtle variations, say in the quivers. Uh, see those quivers. Sometimes it's as minor as the little tassels at the side of the quivers are a little bit different. Um, but anyway, I'd say you've got to stare at them for a while to really be sure what you're looking at. <laughs> the uh, versions that intimidate me a bit because they're the immortals so ornately dressed normally with such a lot of patterns and colours and so on. I've sort of started these guys early on but I've got a bit stuck on them, kind of equivalent of writer's block, painter's block, because I'm just quite sure how to proceed with doing justice to these guys. Um, I have as I've ordered the Osprey book on the ancient Persian, so hopefully that might um, set me in the right direction. But at the moment I'm leaning towards the Greeks just because they're a bit easier to paint. Um, anyhow, I hope you uh, like that and whet your appetite. There's plenty more to come. I will be showing off all these guys once I've got around to finishing them off. Um, and, you know, the ones I've got a very small selection of the quite large um, range that this on rows have for the ancient Vendel uh, miniatures. They've got lots more Spartans in more uh, attacking pose. They've got native, um, naked Spartans, uh, got more commands. They've got Macedonians. Some of them look fantastic. Um, and uh, they've got quite a bit of the variety that would have been part of the Achaemenid Persian um, armies as well with uh, Lycians and uh, Egyptians and others as well. So um, hell of a lot to like about their figures and so I've got a fair few to work on but I will definitely be getting more at a later date. So there you have it. Hope you like that. Thistle and Rose again I mentioned it in the early video the unboxing that um, you've got to go to the uh, Facebook page. They're very helpful. Um, Bill Hupp particularly seems a great guy and um, you go onto there and you can download their PDF of their um, uh, of their catalogue by going into the groups section um, and you'll find it there. I'll put a link obviously in the description uh, again below. All right, see you around.